Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another review video. This time we're taking a look at two products very kindly sent to us uh, via iPassport, which I've reviewed several of their Bluetooth USB kind of remote mouse setup thingies in the past, and I've always been really happy. I actually, this is one of the products that I actually carry in my backpack every single day, and I use it probably at least about once a week. Uh, usually for like presentation kind of stuff. But yeah, these are super useful. I love these. They're not really expensive. I I don't know off the top of my head what the prices on these exactly are. I'll put a thing down below here. But on average, these tend to only be about like 20 bucks ish Some of them are a little bit cheaper. Some of them are a little bit more expensive depending on if they're backlit or have a rechargeable battery or whatnot. But yeah, we could see here they send in two models. Uh, this one is a mini Bluetooth keyboard. And yeah, it, it says Fire Stick and Apple TV, but you can use these with pretty much anything. You can see here, it works with everything. It's just a wireless uh, Bluetooth uh, keyboard thingy. So yeah, anything with Bluetooth, it'll, it'll work for. It says it's specifically targeted towards Fire Stick TV and Apple TV, but eh, it'll work with everything. And yeah, there's a full keyboard. It says it's backlit. We'll take a look at that in a sec. The other model, is uh, Bluetooth as well as it has a 2.4 gigahertz uh, dongle. So this is actually kind of more in line with what I find useful. You can plug uh, the USB dongle into just about anything with a USB port and it'll just show up as a mouse and keyboard. These are absolutely fantastic. Uh, it does say this has voice search, uh, which yeah, is sort of useful for, I, I guess, if you're using this for like... Um, like a TV box that has like uh, Google Voice or whatever you can um, like search using the voice commands. I uh, never really personally use that functionality of it, but it's I guess better to have that than not. And yeah, it says uh, the mouse will feature innovative. Okay. Here we can see uh saying for like game consoles pcs smartphones uh on the go which ironically enough i actually have used this once on a smartphone uh, to control it for like media playback um while like also connected via hdmi to a monitor anyway uh smart tvs android tv boxes etc etc i do use an android tv box so this is like right up my alley and portable elegant lifestyle choice okay <laughs> Maybe the first two. The third one, uh, that's okay. Touchpad DPI, uh, adjustable, uh, perfect control of all that, etc., etc. You can read through this flavor text if you want to. Uh, let's open the smaller one first. Okay. Uh, it does have... Uh, if there's any complaint I have with iPassport is they've not moved on from uh, micro USB. So all of their devices still use micro USB. I would prefer them to move on to uh, to USB C, but I mean, okay, fine, fair enough. It's probably cheaper to use micro uh, USB than USB C, but eh. yeah, you can see why they're saying it's uh, specifically designed for uh, Fire Stick and Apple TV. Uh, it's because it has like a holster for those remotes that would fit in here. Uh, the problem with those remotes are they're usually just like glorified D pads. Uh, so if you have to enter text on them, you have to use an on-screen keyboard, which is painful. So that's the problem that this is attempting to solve, is that, uh, let's just pull this out. Uh, we have all the keys are like silicone domed with uh, like the snap domes, the metal snap domes under them. So I actually like that feeling. Silk screening is not perfect. There's some small imperfections, but it's it's good enough. I don't, I don't, I've never had one of these like... Um, like rub off the the printed legend so they seem to be pretty durable we have we have the uh micro usb connector on the bottom that's for charging we have a power switch which it does power on so there's uh some battery left in this uh we have a thing that tells me to open it on the bottom <laughs> uh let's see there we go and undoubtedly the battery is going to be in here. Uh, we'll, we'll do this a proper tear down later. But lots of this uh, metal film. And interestingly enough, it looks like holes. So I guess they intended this to have a different back panel and to have extra buttons on the back. 
Uh, if you saw my like pretty recent uh, video, they actually did have a model of this with the full keyboard on the one side and an actual like uh, D-pad kind of style TV remote uh, thing on the other side. So it looks like this is maybe a precursor to that model. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to shove this in here. And uh, I'm more interested, honestly, in the other model. I don't have the remote. I don't have a Fire TV stick or an Apple TV. So unfortunately, I can't demo sliding the remote into that. Just imagine there'd be a second remote. So this is a Yo Dog. Um, I heard you like remotes, so I stuck a remote on the back of your remote. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, thin user manual with basic explanation. I mean, if you guys are uh, specifications. Uh, 3.7 volt battery. Uh, it doesn't tell me the, ca the capacity of the battery. Why well, fail to connect this keyboard with my devices? Okay. So, yeah. I'm more interested in this guy. This guy is... If you do anything with Raspberry Pis, having one of these is a godsend. <laughs> so, once again, world's shortest uh, micro USB cable. Which are a dime a dozen. I literally have a drawer full of them. Uh, okay, that is it, and luckily, so some of these that I have have like the soft touch rubber, which gets really funky, and especially, I throw these in my backpack, and I just leave them in my backpack, I charge them like once every like three months, if that, probably like maybe twice a year I'll charge these, and they just always work for some reason, like they don't really like drain too much. But I do like that this is all matte plastic. So this should survive quite a beating. Uh, there looks like there maybe is a little bit of glossy plastic on the front there for some odd reason. Uh, but that's it. Everything else is matte. Feels good. I mean, there's a, maybe a little bit of flex in it. But yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I could just toss this in my backpack and it'll get scuffed up like crazy. But it'll still work just fine. Uh, we have the tiny little instruction booklet, which, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not really that much, honestly, instruction-wise that you need to know about these. Uh, let's see. So, it says operation current's only 50 milliamps. I don't know if that's with the backlight on or without. I know you can switch it on and off. And sleep current is less than 1 milliamp. So I guess if you don't use it for a while, it will go to sleep, but you can always physically, there's a hard, like a physical power switch. You can actually switch this off and it'll disconnect the battery. So here's the uh, micro USB connector. We've got our power switch, all the buttons. The buttons on these seem to stick out more than um, the previous model of theirs that I use, but that also kind of means they're easier to press, sort of. I'm not like they were ever hard to press. Yeah, they have a very good tactile feedback. The trackpad is kind of small. This is inset much more than some of the other models that I've tested. Uh, but it, it's fine. This is plenty. This is really only used for like, you know, if I use this, I'll use this for like a Raspberry Pi or a Media Center to like control the, the mouse. Yeah, it's good enough. It has sort of a matte texture on it. So if you get like Cheetos on it, <laughs> it'll rub right off. It's fine. There is a little bit of a gap here, so it's not pressed quite flush up against the uh, plastic there. Uh, there is a little bit of flexing in the case, but yeah, I don't think that'll affect anything really. These do have multi-touch, so if you do, you could do two finger scrolling and uh, pinch to zoom, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I undoubtedly that'll work on this. I've it's worked on every other iPassport that I have. We have our power indicator, battery indicator, and like signal. I guess mode indicator because yes you can use bluetooth or rf uh that is really i do like that the uh function keys like the secondary functions are highlighted in like this bright neon green that's really really good like visibility wise on our back we have sort of this textured pattern which does not feel bad this actually feels pretty good in the hands one handy uh doesn't i don't really think i'd ever drop this uh, feels pretty good. Just four screws will pop this open in a sec. The battery door is pretty easy to open. That's pretty good. 
we have a Nokia clone battery, the BL5C. That's a great thing about all these. Uh, you can get these batteries like super cheap, super easy. And uh, yeah, so it's just like one of these old Nokia batteries. It says 1,020 milliamp hours. Uh, don't know if that's true or not, but a lot of times these remotes draw so little power that, you know, they don't really need a, like a super powerful battery. They'll, they seemingly run forever. I already see contacts for like AA battery option. Uh, they didn't solder it and probably some of the components might be missing. But that is interesting. Maybe they were thinking about having a, another model that ran off of uh, double A or triple A's. It would be. I also see solder connections for like an IR LED. It almost looks like maybe. Once we get this open, I'll see if there's like a drive transistor around there. That's actually really interesting. Here are the contacts for the battery, and that's about it. There's uh, two areas. One here with like a uh, plastic hold things for the uh, dongle itself, which is. Tiny little dongle. Uh, I love that they have a spot to put them in because otherwise I would 100% lose them. Uh, so let's just stick the battery in. And I guess you could store like a little thumb drive or something there. Close this up, turn it on. So I get a blue battery indicator and then it's flashing orange because it's not seeing like a connected device because the dongle is sitting in here, it's not plugged in. Uh, and it does turn off after like, that was about maybe five seconds. If I press the button, it wakes up again and it researches for something to connect to. So, uh, let's see. The function, this, this button here is for the backlight. So I got red, I got green, I got blue, and then I got off. So, it is RGB, but it doesn't do any like fancy PWM color mixing or anything. So you, you get the primary colors and that's it. It would be nice to have a white as well. Uh, and it would be nice to be able to change the brightness of this, which I, I think this is, let me just, uh, yeah, let's turn off the lights there. So it's actually pretty bright. So if I could change the brightness, I would be happier. But yeah, probably red will be the least battery sucky. <laughs> um, well, off would get you the least power consumption, but red would probably be the second least option. Green and blue are probably going to consume more current, but yeah. And it, it, it is pretty visible. The only thing I'm just noticing now, so let me bring back the lights. Um, those green indicators, uh, once, if, if I'm in the dark you can't see them <laughs> because they're not translucent. There's just silk screen on the top. So you just have to remember. So if I shut off the lights here, uh, I mean, I can just about make it. If I put my hand cup over the top, I can just about see what the icons say. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. So you you can kind of still see it if you like reflect it off your hand and like look very close. I can see that that says end and that says home. Uh, but yeah, it's not super visible. Uh, so I guess you're just gonna have to remember the secondary functions uh, if you're using this remote in the dark, for instance, for like home entertainment or whatever. But yeah, it does seem to shut off pretty quickly to save power. And, uh, yeah, so I guess all that we really need to do is, uh, and just test both of these. Um, and so let's, uh, get that set up and I'll, uh, demonstrate some of these functions. Okay. So we are back. I just wanted to do a quick demo of this. I'm just going to use my tablet because it's, uh, more convenient than digging out the, uh, the computer and setting up the camera for that. Anywho, uh, you can see I'm connected over Bluetooth. Uh, there is a dongle, so if, if I wanted to, I could actually use the dongle and then the USB adapter. But just uh, Bluetooth directly connecting to a tablet is way more convenient. You can see here, yeah, there you go. I can control the mouse and uh, let's see, where's the, yeah, there you go, left click button. So yeah, I can scroll around and even the D-pad, the media controls as well. I can change the volume. That's really useful. Um, yeah, everything works. And uh, if, if I wanted to, I could just uh, uh, open up like a web browser. Oops. Nope, oh, nope, escape. 
So one thing that is confusing me, this button on one of my other iPassports is the the left click button. This one, they're on the side here. So it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. But uh, I can, for example, uh, dismiss. I can just open a new tab and just directly type, for example, Hackaday. Ah, see, I'm gonna keep doing that. <laughs> there we go. And yeah, this absolutely works, works perfectly. Let's see if the uh, the two finger scroll works. And yeah, it is super sensitive. I think you can change the touchpad sensitivity. Uh, yeah, here you go. So if you press function and press that, that should be able to toggle. Still seems pretty sensitive. Accidentally refreshed, I guess. Oh God, I'm gonna keep doing that. Yeah, you should be able to, go away. You should be able to uh, adjust the sensitivity. I don't know, maybe that doesn't work over Bluetooth. Maybe it's only over USB because I'm clicking on it here and uh, it still seems very sensitive. It, you can, oh, oh, you can also just, there's multi-gesture, but you can just use the sidebar to scroll as well. But that seems like that's the same speed. Oh, that actually seems a little bit better. Okay, yeah, you might have to play with the sensitivity, but yeah, at least on this, that seems better. Uh, I think maybe there's only two modes. Yeah, there's a fast and then like a slightly less fast, but still kind of fast sensitivity there. But uh, yeah, that, that works pretty well. Yeah, okay, I see. So... Now the cursor, that's a, it's a little bit slower. If I switch this, yeah, so that's much faster. Okay, yeah, I like the slower mode a little bit better. It's more controllable. And uh, pinch to zoom, let's see. Okay, pinch to zoom doesn't seem to be working. It's not a large trackpad, so yeah. But, uh, oops, there you go. Yeah, this works a treat. And uh, there are different lighting modes. Um, unfortunately, you can't control the brightness. And uh, it's just three colors, red, green, and blue, or off. And uh, you can disable the trackpad. There's, there's a bunch of like secondary function keys, and I really like that they're tied to a different color, so that they're very visible, except for when you're in the dark. When you're in the dark, you can't see them at all because they're printed on top of the black area, so it doesn't. The light doesn't shine through, unfortunately. But yeah, overall, uh, this is a treat. Having both Bluetooth and RF is very, very useful. Uh, there is another model, I believe, iPassport makes that has an IR transmitter that you can reprogram from any TV remote. That's sort of like the best of all worlds. Uh, but if you don't need that functionality, if you're never going to use this with a TV, for example, then you really don't need that. Uh, the, this is built pretty well as well. Um, I'll pop this open in a sec, but uh, let me then demo you guys this. So, oop, accidentally refresh that. <laughs> uh, yeah, the remote, the second remote they sent me, the uh, KP81030V, uh, is pretty similar. Um, this one does not have a, like an RF receiver. So this you have to pair over Bluetooth. And uh, we'll just switch this on. I will say I opened this once and it, it is kind of a pain to get back together. So I would not advise opening this uh, unless if you really have to. You can pull off this back like I just showed you and the battery is right under here. Uh, and you can peel that off to look at the battery, which I can do right now but you you still need to get to the board to like desolder it. You might be able to do it while it's in situ, but it, it's probably gonna, you're probably gonna burn some of the plastic if you try to get your iron in there or short out the battery. So yeah, I would advise if you did want to, to replace the battery on here, uh, just take it apart properly. <laughs> just gonna shove that in there. So one thing I noticed is obviously this was designed to have multiple extra functionality. There's a whole button pad on the back that's not populated and there's no PCB. There should be a secondary PCB with extra buttons on it, it looks like, but it's not populated. So that's maybe a higher end model that either is 
maybe a future product or maybe they just canceled that functionality and uh yeah the switch uh i didn't get it in quite right it's a little bit crooked it was better before i'm gonna have to reopen this anyway uh, i want to show you guys the inside there's an ir window here i have a feeling that's another function that they removed because when i open this uh, you'll see the there's a spot for an led there and there's no ir led in there uh, the backlight is actually not super bright but uh it is highly visible in the dark so it's not like it's going to blind you or ruin your night vision so that's really good uh, we have dedicated media controls here, which is really useful, and then a full keyboard. And uh, yeah, so let me just pair this to my tablet and demo that working. Okay, so I press and held the shift slash BT and function at the same time till this blue light started flashing. So, and it just shows up as iPads port Bluetooth. And uh, that was absolutely painless. And uh, let's just see if that works. So... Uh, up down okay yeah it is working uh, so if I open this up go here reload hackaday oops can't spell and uh, enter there we go and then I can scroll to my heart's content there's no trackpad on here so this is clearly targeted towards and even in their marketing materials uh they said it's for like your fire sticks and your apple tv so this is for like home entertainment so you wouldn't necessarily use this to browse like a full os like windows or something but uh yeah this works a treat and it's connected you can only connect this over bluetooth unfortunately there is no dongle thing but uh pretty much everything has bluetooth nowadays so not really that big of an issue uh, you can turn off the uh, the backlight if you want to save battery. And that's a nice touch. And uh, yeah, we can just go home here. And that works a treat as well. And then I can go through all my apps or whatever. Uh, I guess that is it for the quick demo. Let me, I, I, I'm really interested uh, to show you guys what's inside both of these. So I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to pop these both open and then show you guys at once how it's constructed, what the insides look like, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so here are the two remotes. We can see the, uh, the silicone rubber membrane for the front buttons. All the buttons are tack switches. They're like these snap domes. These parts, uh, if I can... Ah, switch fell inside. Just gotta remove that for a sec. If I turn this on, you can see those are like diffusers. It's quite an interesting way of doing that. You can see there's just some tape over the uh, Bluetooth LED. <laughs> and we can see the uh, board juts out for the uh, micro USB. I really wish it were type C, but eh. probably to bring costs down, they just opted for that. And uh, yeah, I guess just switch this off while we're at it while I'm talking. Uh, you can see here originally this was designed to hold uh, what appears to be AAA batteries and the contacts are still there. We are missing some components but that probably would be easy enough to mod to make it so that you could use AAAs uh, but it has a rechargeable battery which in my opinion that's more useful for me but uh, for like long-term storage probably AAAs would have a better shelf life. Anyway, yeah, we could see the other side of the covered bit where all the uh, buttons should be for a second board, as well as like what looks to be kind of that might be for like a microphone or something. Oddly enough, uh, maybe like one of the other remotes that I reviewed recently that had an onboard mic, maybe this uh, intentionally did have at one point they'd planned to put a microphone on board as well. You could see the spot where the uh, the uh, IR LED would have been, but oddly enough, there's like no solder pads or whatnot. So I'm guessing that was removed pretty early in the development. Uh, so in terms of uh, parts, we have a transistor, which is probably to turn on and off all the, the backlit LEDs. The main chip here, which, uh, focus, there you go. If you are interested, that is upside down. It's YC1024. Six. Uh, that's the main IC there. We could see a chip antenna, so that does all the uh, Bluetooth and everything as well. We could see the crystal for that. Uh, what appears to be like a serial flash chip. 
I'm guessing maybe configuration or firmware stored on there. A chip over here, which if I had to guess, maybe something related to power regulation or something like that. And a little bit of circuitry here, uh, I'm guessing for something to do with the battery. Oh yeah, that's probably for charging, I'm going to guess, because I don't see any other discrete chips there. Either that or the bigger chip. I don't know. I'd have to look up part numbers. There is a small regulator here, and that's it. This is actually quite a simple board. Uh, more interesting board to me <clears throat> is this guy. And we're going to have to actually push these plastic tong tines out a little bit to get this to pop out. And very similarly, we have the entire silicone injection molded uh, button you know, membrane here. Uh, very nicely done. We have the board here, which also very interestingly has spots for battery contacts if they wanted to use like AA batteries. Uh, but of course they opted for rechargeable. So there are contacts here where I would expect an hour LED. So I'm guessing that this did at one point they'd plan to uh, add IR to it. Uh, we have the main IC here. It's a uh, crystal oscillator. We have some uh, like power regulation here right next to the USB and or that might be for uh, battery charging. And yeah, other than that, we have the battery contact here. We have some components that are scattered around that just aren't populated, very interestingly enough. I have no idea what they do. We have four uh, transistors here and that undoubtedly, I'm, I'm going to guess that's maybe for like road drive or possibly for the backlight. Uh, maybe like one per color or something like that. Though I don't know why there'd be four because these are RGB LEDs. But uh, yeah, something like that. There are LEDs here that are reverse mounted. And those are for like the uh, the power indicator and connection status, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. We have a PCB antenna very nicely at a very jaunty angle. And obviously then this chip does all the RF slash Bluetooth implementation. On the front, we have all the LEDs that are scattered across, and they're obviously diffused by the uh, the silicone membrane. And I love their implementation of the trackpad. It's just on the PCB. You could see like all the uh, vias that go to the other side, but yeah, you can imagine that I'm not gonna peel this off because it'll never go on very nicely again. And uh, it'll probably leave a bunch of marks and whatnot. Uh, if I did peel it off, but you can imagine there's probably like a set of like row and column like a matrix of pads and that's how it determines your finger position. It's it's all capacitive. And so yeah, that's that's a very neat way of doing it. Um, if I ever get one of these that breaks, I, I definitely will peel one of these up to see exactly uh, what's under it because I would like to design my own uh, capacitive touch pads. That would be really cool. And everything else is buttons on here. It's buttons all the way down. Yeah, so I can imagine that um, there's not too much to go wrong reliability-wise with these. They're very simple. Uh, they're very well designed. You can see, like, the, uh, the trace work is very interesting. Obviously, on this side, uh, they're addressing the entire rows of buttons, and I'm guessing on this side, the traces would be mostly vertical. But yeah, it's like very robust, probably very cheap to make these. These aren't expensive. Uh, I believe these are like sub like 20 bucks, if that. Uh, so they're pretty cheap. There's really not that much to go wrong. So they should last quite a long while, so long as you don't like dunk them in water or something silly like that. But yeah, uh, they look pretty robust. I've, I've had the ones that I, I use every single day, I've had working no problem for, you know, like probably close to almost like eight years by now is like my oldest one of these. And really the only thing that goes wrong with them is the the battery. Now they do use like this generic Nokia clone battery, the L5C. So you can get these really cheap really easily. But what usually happens is uh, if you if you get one of these that they're old, they start swelling. And so you have to check the batteries in these every once in a while. And uh, the charge, I bet you the charge controller isn't maybe so smart. So sometimes it'll, if you leave it plugged in too long, it'll overcharge these batteries, making that problem worse. And because of the way that I use these, I just leave these in my, I'll charge them up, leave them in my backpack for like an emergency situation where I need them. 
and um, they do have a pretty good like standby time. Like I rarely have to charge them; they always just seem to work. However, uh, so there's probably no low voltage protection. I'm guessing. And uh, there should be a protection board in these, but a lot of these clones don't have protection, which means you can you can discharge them below the safe value. And that's when these batteries start swelling is when they're not happy, when they're like too low of a charge, and then you try to charge them all of a sudden uh, after a long period of time, then they start swelling. So I've had a couple of these balloon up. They're, the, these batteries are cheap. You can get them for like four, three or four bucks off uh, Alley or eBay. Uh, so it's not really that big of a deal, but it's just a thing to keep in mind. I think that's the weakest part of these units are the batteries, uh, but at least they're easy to replace and uh, they're very, you know, ab abundant. You can find them just about anywhere. Uh, once again, a uh, huge thanks to iPassport for sending these in for review. Uh, if I had to choose my pick, I think... Um, the keyboard style ones are way more useful than these TV remote style. But I definitely understand some people don't want this full keyboard. They just want a like conventional TV remote looking uh, thing. And this came with the sleeve, which uh, it's still probably down in the basement. So it attaches to the back of your Apple TV remote. It basically is meant as not a standalone remote, but to to supplement like the actual original remote to either your fire stick or your apple tv so i can understand this is not really a like a swiss army knife sort of remote device much like this is uh, but i still think that if you're going to get one of these just get one of these with the the remote and the trackpad and everything uh this will serve you well i have one in my backpack that's been living there it is ipassport branded as well and that has gotten me through so many like presentations and whatnot at work and it's 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 easily you know paid for itself by now and uh, i use them for entertainment i hook them up to my um my android tv box and so that i don't have to you know use the crappy ir remote that they come with i use them for presentations i hook them up to you know the desktop computer at work that's connected to the projector so that i can um go through slides or whatever I need to do while I'm uh, talking about something. And I use these, I've even used these for gaming <laughs> uh, just to like test out or set up something on a computer that doesn't necessarily have like a keyboard and mouse attached. These are really good for Raspberry Pi stuff too, uh, for configuring them um, when you are using them sort of in an embedded application uh, where you don't want to drag an entire full-size keyboard and mouse. So anywho, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and once again, huge thanks for iPassport for their support of my channel. They've sent me tons of these things, and I've never been disappointed with them. Uh, they are definitely great value for the money. They're, they're very affordable, and they're super useful. So if you guys don't have one of these, 100%, I have no reservations in, in screaming at you, please get one of these. Uh, they are super useful. They saved my ass so many times. Anywho, uh, I hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.